Hello everyone! My name is Tamara Laporte from Willowing Arts and I'm very excited to be here today because Donna invited me to be part of Find Out Fridays, which is this super exciting new project she's running where she sends people uh, new art supplies and um, uh, and then you, you we, we're asked to create a piece of art with them and I'm so I've got my box here woohoo and I'm super excited to see what's inside of the box let's find out shall we right oh, oh ooh, stencil oh I've got a Pam character stencil girl uh, stencil stencil girl products stencil Oh, that's awesome. It's of the it's of a, a window, I think sort of a windowsill that has a little heart hanging down it, which I love because that's actually a imagery that I use quite a bit. So that's awesome. Okay, I'm excited about that. Step first one. Here's a piece of here's a letter that I want. What else? Ooh, I got a little. I've got a little um, stamp here and it says a certain darkness is needed to see the stars. Wow, that is a beautiful sentiment. Okay, I'm in my head already going, how am I gonna, <laughs> how am I gonna combine it all? <laughs> then I have, oh, what is this? This is uh, some twine, I think, some, 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 some like, oh, some leathery, um, string. Okay. Okay. <laughs> leathery string. Okay, right. Oh, I'm going to have to think of, and then the last piece, oh, nice. Okay, I have a, is that it? Let's check. Yep. <laughs> This is a Liquitex, a really big Liquitex paint marker. Okay. Interesting. Huh. So, what color is it? Prussian blue. Okay. Okay. Let's get creating, shall we? Ah! Not sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to think about this one. All right. Thanks for checking out my project today. If you want to find out more about me, my name is Tamara Laporte from Willowing Arts and you can find out all about what I do uh, on www.willowing.org. See you there, bye. Guys, so I'm sitting at my studio um, desk here and I've got the four items that Donna sent me in the mail in front of me and I'm trying to sort of just decide what shall I do with these um, for items and um, so one of the the things or the themes I'm feeling coming from these uh, products is the the stencil has that really romantic sort of window um, I don't know what's that sort of medieval window with a tree branch as I'm imagining darkness and nighttime and I love that it has a hanging heart because I use hanging hearts and stars a lot in my work and then um, the quote that is on the stamp that I was um, given, a certain darkness is needed to see the stars. Well, that theme goes really nicely with the, the stencil. So it's nighttime and stars, hearts and stars are a thing for me. So I don't know if Donna did this deliberately or if it was pure coincidence, but I feel lucky. Now, this is a bit of a, uh, hmm, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Because I don't tend to put embellishments um, that are raised other than texture paste or molding paste. I don't tend to use much else and collage, but no, not a lot of raised stuff. So I did think I could maybe use this to create an interesting background with, like if I lay down the twine or the string and I use a brayer to go over it, I can create interesting textured backgrounds. I might do that with this um, string. And then of course we've got the massive paint marker. And again, this color, the dark blue of night, the dark blue of night, I think fits uh, nicely with it as well. And I can use that possibly as part of the the, 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 the dark night sky. So that's currently what's coming to me while I'm picking out um, a lot of my work, and I'll show you a little bit of what I do, 
has a girl of some sort in it. So here's a little bit, I haven't actually done much. This is actually a fairly new journal, so I haven't really done much in here. Um, but I was thinking, shall I do something in this journal or shall I, like this is not even finished, or shall I work bigger? Because this stencil is fairly large, so it would take up a lot of space. And so a lot of my work is kind of whimsical, cute, cute work like this girly girly things and I like the idea to maybe possibly do a girl like this with a an animal and then in the night sky so maybe she could be looking up at the stars because that's what we're saying here at certain darkness is needed to see the stars so she could be surrounded by darkness oh I've been doing a little <laughs> look little pumpkin little Halloween thingy here I'm just I've just grabbed quickly what I've got lying around and then um, this girl I've been I'd drawn recently and I thought, oh, she could fit. Um, so I did think, should I continue working on this uh, girl? But then I don't have a lot of space for the stencil and the stencil is quite nice. And I thought I could um, have that as a behind her or something and maybe in that way. Let me open the stencil up. So I'm just playing and thinking, where shall I add? Shall I start something completely new or shall I add it to an existing um, drawing or painting that I've already been doing? And I quite like the idea of starting completely anew, a fresh. But I thought I'd let you in on the, on the thinking process here. Ooh, so pretty. Put this down so I'm not the light. Um, so how will it come out? So if there's a window here. It's so nice as a background, isn't it? Like the whole, to have the whole thing there. I'm gonna do a couple of, I'm gonna do a couple of tests of these, this stencil to see what it actually looks like. So as you get a, it's hard to get a good impression of what a stencil looks like uh, without actually having sprayed any, anything through it. Okay, so I'm gonna just do that and I'll be right back in just a second. All right, you guys, so I've done a little bit of playing and thinking and here I did a, um, and then I used a Dilutions ink spray just to see what it would look like, the stencil. And then here, the cool thing about stencils is that they're very versatile. You can obviously just go through the um, crevices with your pencil and draw the actual stencil out, or you can use acrylics. And I dabbed the acrylics through, and it also comes out really strongly. So then I got a good feel for what this stencil actually looks like. Now, I don't have to use the entire stencil. I can just use the window or even just the window can come peeking out of the edge of the page, you know. I can do all kinds of things with this um, stencil. And I just wanted to have a look at what it looked like. And then I was just playing with um, what um, what I wanted to kind of actually create. So I was wondering or I was thinking of having a girl look up at the window or and or the, the sort of outside starry sky. And then I realized, ah, oh, there is, of course, this is a window. <laughs> I was kind of thinking, where am I sitting? You're inside a house if you're looking at the, the tree hanging outside of the window. And then I got all confused. I thought, oh no, the girl's inside that. And then I come complicated things. And I thought, look, it's art. I have creative freedom. Maybe this is a ruin. <laughs> I basically want to have a bit of a sky, you see. But I'm gonna do, what, I'm, what I like doing a lot is layering and using collage and things like that. So um, it's not gonna be realistic. Of course, it's not gonna be realistic anyway, but I suddenly got stumped on the concept that this window was the view of this one is actually you sitting indoors and looking out and if I thought I was going to be outside <laughs> for some reason so uh, the girl so yeah so I'm thinking of doing something like this I like including little bears or rabbits or elephants uh, with my girl characters and so I was thinking she could be looking up at the window or at the night sky with the stars and I'll have a bit of that stencil there maybe not all and the little character that's giving her a little cuddle so, so I'm going to kind of design that and we'll time lapse the rest of this video and then I'll, um, if I'm using any other um, supplies, then I shall um, uh, let, you, let, let you know through subtitles. So I hope you enjoy the session with me today and uh, if you want to learn more about me, please come and visit me on www.willowing.org. Thanks guys!
this um, uh, tutorial or demonstration very closely you will have noticed that I didn't use the leather twine or leather ribbon rope that I thought I had that's because it's not <laughs> it is actually rusty wire like metal wire and I only uh, came uh, uh, discovered that as I took it out of its packet and it didn't say anything on here you see so I kind of just assumed it was very tightly rolled up leather string <laughs> instead it's metal rusty wire so I was really stumped on how I could use this in a painting and in the end I, I thought right well what I might use it for is to for to put in her dress some cross stitching hatching cross hat not hatching but the just, you know what I mean? Like some three cross, like as if you stitched it with a um, with a piece of actual ribbon or something. So I'm at the point of fin finalizing my um, my painting, and so to stay true to the to the challenge, which was use all the materials that you were sent, even if you can't think of any way to use them, I'm going to uh, use them now anyway. So I've got an awl here that I normally use for my book binding. Uh, activities, antics, and you, with it you can p uh, punch holes. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna close up for you. I'm gonna punch holes in a cross crosses, three or three crosses of three crosses, and then thread <laughs> the metal through. So when you, if you do do that, it's a good idea to have something soft under your hole punch, under the bit of your hole punch. I've got a bit of bunched up tissue here. So actually, I'm going to just first draw. I'll just draw the holes or the all the all the the crosses the way I want them. So one. So I've got a, I've got a stitch here, but it's not straight. It's not straight onto the line that I've drawn. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna take this out. Okay, I'm taking it out, guys, because um, because it was harder. It is hard to fold fold the stitching the the metal over in such small small pieces but what we could do possibly which would be quite nice is to put like a frame an inner frame around oh sorry around the edges so it could if I had a straighter piece again put an inner frame around the edges this way that might be nice actually we'll go over there though I quite like that idea but it's um, this this rustic the rusty wire is the hardest piece for me. Sorry to, in, to include um, because it's it's hard to keep get straight, 
it's very bent, you know, you have to really kind of straighten it yourself. But I feel quite challenged to try and get it in here somehow. So if we did it this way. Or I could use it as I could use it to hang it up. Alright guys, I have decided to use the wire met metal as a hanging hanging device on the back so I can either do a long big one because because I'm working on paper and I can't normally you know can't normally hang paper up but if I had a I can either put it on the back so you can hang it on a, on a, on a, um, na a nail or you can hang you know you can put like a little um, hanging device effectively by either taping this down or gluing it down taping is probably easier I am admitting that this is kind of my last resort because I don't really know how to um, <laughs> how to you can even do a little one hold on you can make it all like like smaller so I find it very hard to to weave this metal wire into my um, painting because it's not I am <laughs> just a bit stumped. Also it's because I kind of assumed it was um, it was string before I opened it so I had already planned it all out and then when I came to it using it it couldn't use it for what I had in mind and then I had to kind of improvise at the end. Anyway so if you do some of this now this work of art that normally can't be hung up can be hung up. Okay. You see, so now it has a little hanging device, but it should really move slightly to the left. It's not central. From here it looks like it's central, but it isn't. There we go. That's better. You see, so I can hang it now. That's actually quite cool. I can hang it in my room. So that's handy. So you can use these kind of metal, and it's kind of, I like the rust, and you have to say that I like the rust effect. Um, but I'm, I'm not able to, um, I wasn't sure how to use metal wire in my painting. So I did my best, sorry Donna, <laughs> for the metal wire, but, and I have used all three other items. The stencil is over here, the stamp is over here, and the blue marker, the blue Liquitex paint marker has been um, applied in the hair. So I hope you enjoyed my the making of this um, painting which I like a lot. It's been an interesting um, challenge to use these materials. Um, I found it uh, initially I was worried about using the stencil but ended up really like I really like how it merged into the painting and I think the stamp goes well with it. The theme of the stars and the darkness and a darker painting color scheme. And then the paint, this is a really yummy, yummy marker pen. And then uh, the only thing I really struggled with was the, the, the rusty wire that I didn't know was a rusty wire. <laughs> I thought it was leather um, twine or, or ribbon, not ribbon, rope, string. So anyway, here we go. I hope you enjoyed this session with me, Tamara Laporte from Willowing Arts, and I hope to see you around. If you want to find out more about me, please come visit www.willowing.org. Okay, thanks guys for being here today. Bye!